Yes. Why? Because we are in a season, we are in a time where God's glory is unfolding. It's a continuous process. And you need for you to benefit from God's unfolding glory in 2023. You've got to understand what to expect. And so last week we talked about a number of things. And I hope we, we remember. And if we don't remember, I'll encourage you to go back and listen to next year's recording. Because one can only receive what you have embraced what you have nurtured, what you have allowed to become life in you. Because last year, we, last, last week, we talked about the, uh, the um, from high ground to unfolding glory. And, we, and, and the key scripture was taken from Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 14. And it was talking about that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And we said there were three things that it meant of us, believers. One, that we will pray and yield to the Holy Spirit. Secondly, that we will dispel darkness. And third, we will preach the gospel. And we saw that the glory that we carry and will carry is subject to how, how, how much we behold Jesus Christ who himself is glory. And so today on that foundation, and we talked about last week, and we're, and we're, and we're reminded at the crossover night that we are as the wind. And here we see in John chapter 3 verse 8 that we read that Jesus was in the process of trying to explain to Nicodemus what the new birth entailed. And he was telling him in this verse 8 that we, we see that the wind blows where it wishes and, and you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from and where it's going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. And hear the word. And he wanted Nicodemus to understand that he didn't, just as you can't put, predict or, or fathom where the wind is coming from or where it's going. Yet, its effects are known. He was trying to let Nicodemus know that you don't really need to understand everything about this new birth before you experience it. Because it will happen. It, it, there is an end. There is an outcome. And so today we're talking about glorious outcomes. The glorious outcomes of God's unfolding glory in and through you. You want to live life in 2023 expecting outcomes of this glorious unfolding in and through your life. And so this John 3 verse 8 we saw, it says the wind blows. The, the Greek word for wind there is pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A. Pneuma. Like pneumatic, pneuma, pneumatic. Pneumatic is not puma. P-N-E-U-M-A. -E. So, and this wind is also, this, this Greek word pneuma is also the Greek word for spirit in this scripture. And therefore what Jesus is saying here, that the birth, he says, your birth, the, the, you, the, the, the birth of Numa causes you to operate with Numa. Your birth in the spirit causes you to operate like the wind. That's what it says. The wind, the, 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 they're, they're the same root Greek words. The wind blows where it wishes. And it goes on to say, so everyone who is, so is everyone who is born of the spirit. And so, those born of the Spirit operate like the wind. And you've got to understand that it is a nature of this supernatural walk we are called into not to be predictable. Because the wind cannot be predicted. But it has. There is an effect of wind. 
you will know where wind has been, where it has impacted or created um, something to happen. And so we will, we will look at three glorious outcomes to expect. And these outcomes are not exhaustive, but they're the outcomes that the Spirit of the Lord has laid on my heart. So the first outcome to a glorious outcome, Kelechi and Kechi take pen, get your pen and paper and write. Kelechi, you sit here because you'll be reading. The glorious outcomes, that would, there are three glorious outcomes to expect. The, the first one we will consider is manifestations of the Spirit. Manifestations of the Spirit. So let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. Manifestations of the Spirit. If anyone gets it, please let them read. Do they get it before our reader? We have a reader in the house. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. Are we there? Corinthians chapter 12, verse 11. Okay, stand up. Stand up. God bless you. In the Lord, however, woman is not is not. One Corinthians. Are you reading one Corinthians chapter twelve? No, it's not. Verse eleven. At all this. All these are the work of one, one of the same spirit. Open your mouth wide, son. And he and he gives them. To each one, just like start from the beginning again. All these, all these, all these are the work of of one of the same spirit, and he gives it. He gives them to each one, just as, just as, just as he determines. Praise the Lord! All these, the Lord. he said, are the workings. I'll read my version. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. What we need to see here in, uh, in the new birth, just as we can't put the first operation of the Spirit was the grace of the new birth. But so, and, and we don't know how the workings of the Spirit ha makes that happen, because it's like the wind. You just know that a conviction comes upon you and the spirit of the, the, the wind of God's spirit stamps your heart and you just know you need that heart of stone to become a heart of flesh. And subsequently, like the wind, the spirit releases manifestations of himself as he wills to those who are his. He says, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. In this, the glorious outcomes the Lord expects of us. Expects us to be seen in our lives in this season of his unfolding glory. Will be distributed as the spirit wills. As the wind flows, you, you will not know, but ours is to be ready. Ours is to be available. And these, spirit, these, these manifestations of the Spirit, verse 7, what does verse 7 say of 1 Corinthians chapter 12? Verse 7, verse 7, we are excited about God's word. Verse 7, reader. But the manifestations of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Thank you, sir. The, the manifestations of the Spirit are given to every man to profit all. So these manifestations will be given to anyone the Spirit, the wind of God's Spirit deems, deems fit and ready. 
And what are these manifestations? Let's read them from verse 8 to verse 10. Um, I'm there. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge. I hope we're writing down what these are. By the same Spirit. So to the another, first, okay, sir, continue. To I'll another faith it. by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, mm. to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. Thank you, sir. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it was that was to ten. That's it. Yeah. Thank you. And so we are saying that the we are talking about glorious outcomes in this season and this time and this year of, of, of God's unfolding glory in and through our lives. He expects glorious outcomes to be seen and one of these is the manifestation of the gifts manifestations of the spirit and these manifest and we said the spirit gives as he wills as it blows we do not know how it flows but you will be in a situation and you call upon the lord because remember we said that we pray we will pray we will be praying we will continue to pray in 2023 and yield to the Holy Spirit. And as you pray and yield to the Holy Spirit, you are in a situation and the Spirit of the Lord knows what you need and gives. And we saw in verse 7, each one, it says, there are varieties, sorry, let verse 8, for, what, for, for to one is given, to one, that could be any of us, depending on the scenario and the situation you're in, for one is given the word of wisdom. Uh, to another through the spirit and another the word of knowledge and according to the same spirit to another sorry word of wisdom through the spirit another word of knowledge according to the same spirit the relevant the, these are supposed to be the revelatory gifts and the uh, and to another so there should be three of them sir where am i why am i just seeing two here word of wisdom word of knowledge And the other one should be the distinguishing of spirits as in verse, um, in verse, not in verse 10. And the other, and, I, I, and you need to know another of the gifts of the spirit in verse 9, another is faith. The ability to have faith. We sang, we sang uh, some of the songs we sang today was about God's word coming to pass. And you've got to be able to, to trust and believe that God is who he said he is. That his word is what he said he is. Because the scripture tells us that he sent his word. He sent forth his word. And he healed them. Not only did that word heal. It delivered from all their destructions. And so the gift. Another is the gift of faith. By the same spirit. To another gifts of healing. Because the Lord has sent us to heal the sick, to raise the dead. Therefore, people should be sick around you. And that's why we trust and ask the Holy Spirit to, to as, he's, as he's flowing in the scenario, to bestow upon us that gift of faith so, and the gift of, of, of healings. So when we pray for the sick, we see his word come to pass. The energy, the power of the Holy Spirit joins and we see the glorious outcome to another effecting of miracles again miracles is is the children's bread what are mi miracles they're supernatural acts of god's power that defy natural laws and that is why we go and we see the lame walk we see the dead raised these are miracles and this is because we've trusted god to the letter t we've received the gift of faith We've received the gift of the working of miracles. And in that scenario and at that time, that the Lord knows it is necessary and the wind of the Spirit blows, we receive and we apply. Amen. 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 And these are the power gifts. And then he says, and to another prophecy. 
And to be, again, the ability to speak for what God is saying. Not, not that it doesn't make you a prophet, but the spirit, the manifestation of the spirit at that time requires an utterance. Distinguishing of spirits to another various kinds of tongues. This is the various, it's not your ordinary tongues, but this is the spirit comes upon you because there's an intercession that is necessary. There is a prayer that is needed and a, and a diverse type of tongues comes in. And then also the ability to interpret, interpret tongues. The manifestations of the Spirit are glorious outcomes that we are to expect in this season at this time. Mm. I hope and I pray that we desire these manifestations. Amen. The Spirit, we saw, we saw that the Spirit gives it as He wills. We are like the wind, and like the wind, the Spirit of the Lord operates. And ours is to be ready as sponges to receive. Knowing that when we pray, something is expected to happen. As we yield to the Holy Spirit, something is expected to happen. You're praying for someone. Something is expected to happen. The wind, like the wind, something is expected to happen. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father God. Father God. Let's, let's rise, yeah, and be part of this prayer, yeah, pray with our hearts. Father God, Father God, Father God, Father God. let the gifts of the Spirit, let let the gifts of the Spirit. be manifest through me, be manifest through me. For, the go for the good, for the good of, those of those you bring my way. In Jesus' name. Pray in the Spirit and just cry it up. Father God, let the gifts of the Spirit be manifest through me, Lord. For the good of everyone you bring our way. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. So the manifestation of the Spirit. Be ready. As you because the gifts are for the good of all. You and I are on this world. I, I, don't, I was speaking, I was speaking to someone yesterday, and they said they didn't want problems. Well, they didn't want to know about problems. <laughs> And I said, you don't think you came to this life to drink tea and coffee. That your existence is to solve a problem. Your existence on this earth is to be a solution to somebody else. It's to be to solve a problem. We're not to waste space. Because if you're not solving a problem or being a solution, you're a waste of space. But none of us are a waste of space. God created us with intention. There's an int intentionality that there's something only you can solve. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor there is something, there's there's something, something. Only, you can solve. only you can solve. And that's why God, that's why God puts, you puts you here. Amen? Amen. And so that is why the manifestations of the Spirit are because you and I are solutions somewhere for the gifts of the Spirit to manifest through. Amen? Amen. The second thing, the second outcome, the second glorious outcome is that prayer makes the spirit to act. Prayer makes the spirit to act. And we're talking about the Holy Spirit. And this is the, the pneuma. Prayer makes the pneuma. And we said it's also like the wind, the breath. And so when we pray, Something is going on. Let's read Acts chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. Reader, Acts chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. Acts chapter 9, verse 10 and 11. Acts chapter 9, verse 10, 11, rise. God bless you. Acts chapter 
Sneed loud, sweetheart. Loud. Yeah, loud, loud, loud. In the, the makers, those of the cycle name Amayas, the Lord put them. In Damascus, yeah? Go on, baby. In Damascus. In Damascus, those of the cycle name Amayas, the Lord called them into a vision. Amayas, yes, Lord, he, he answered. The, the Lord told them, go to, go to the house of Judas on the sh on a straight street on a straight street and ask him and ask ask for a man from Tar Tarsus named Saul Saul for he is praying. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So we see here this is a product of prayer. We see here that Saul was praying. And while Saul, and if we backtrack, if we, if we start at the beginning of, of this Acts chapter 9, Saul was on his road to Damascus. And he had an assignment to persecute the Christians he will find in Damascus. And the scripture tells us that while he was en route, he encountered God. A light shone from heaven and he fell off his horse. And God spoke to him from that light and said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Immediately, the wind of God's spirit caused him to know who was speaking to him. And he said, Lord, what did he say? He said, Lord, um, um, blah, 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 blah. what did he say? He said something. Then the voice saying, so, so, whatever. And he said, who art thou, Lord? He said, who are you, Lord? He actually knew it was the Lord speaking. And he, he, that light, that encounter was so much so that the light of God's glory prevented, was such that he couldn't see. His eyes were blinded for a season. And he was led by hand to the house of Judas, as we see here. On the on the on the street called Straight, and he says he said and he says he, he he said here now there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. So Ananias was one of the so-called believers that that Saul of Tarsus was going to Damascus to persecute. And and he says here that, that this certain disciple Damascus sorry in Damascus named Ananias. That the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Arise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying. We are saying that one of the glorious outcomes is the fact that prayer moves the spirit to act. So Saul of Tarsus was praying. He had encountered God. Ananias was where he was somewhere. And as a result of those prayers, God spoke to Ananias in a vision by the Spirit to go do something for Saul. So what you need to understand here, that prayer causes the Spirit to act. And that is why it's important that we are specific with our prayer. Because Saul would have been praying, Lord, I need this, my eyes to open. Lord, teach me your way. Show me how to walk this new walk with you. Because he was learned, yet his belief and conviction that service of God required persecution of believers. And so he would have been praying, Lord, I want my eyes to be open. I want to actually see what your assignment is for me. Because if we read further, by the time Ananias who responded to his prayer as led by the wind of the Spirit, he came and first he prayed and the scales fell off his eyes. And secondly, he told him what God will have him do. He will witness not just to the Gentiles, but also to the Jews. And so at this particular time, Ananias was a helper for Saul. You know... We need helpers, and one of our prayer focus this um, season is helpers in CTMI. 
I want us to pray. Because we, we want to, as we pray, and you know that's the beauty of our spiritual language. We, the, the scripture tells us that it helps us pray the exact mind of the Father. Because there's only so much we know to pray in the understanding. But our spiritual language goes deeper than that. And so I want us to rise and let us pray. We want everything that is necessary to align in 2023, to align in our lives. Amen? Amen. Because we want the glorious outcomes to be manifest in and through us. Let's say, Father God, Father God let my helpers align. Let, my help us align. let the helpers of CTMI align. Let the align. Let the of CTMI align. As I pray, as I pray, and the wind of God's Spirit moves, begin to pray in the Spirit. You want to pray that your helpers will align. We need our helpers to align. We need the helpers of destiny to align. Moko Shebra Kasanda. Make it Keke Sanda. Mighty God, let our help us align. Let our help us align, Shaham Baba. The help us of CT and my mind, Lord. And bring us, Lord. Robo Shekeke. Let the Spirit of the Lord move. Let the wind of God's Spirit blow. As we pray, Lord, and bring into alignment and cause your angels to act for the Lord and orchestrate things in our lives, orchestrate the things in our families, orchestrate things in our businesses. Align the everything that needs alignment. We bless you, Lord. Robo Koshanda. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's be seated. The third, the third thing we see that the Spirit, the glorious outcome, the third glorious outcome is transforming to his image. Transforming to his image. And I forgot to welcome everyone to Christ Transforming Ministries International because the transforming features in, in what we're about. And we're called, we're called to raise and equip prosperous, glorious army. And we equip, we equip by virtue of, of teaching the transforming word and discipleship. We prosper by healing spirit, soul, and body. The glorious element is by us reflecting the Godhead in all we do. And the kingdom element is us bringing God's way of doing things to bear in all that we do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So we're talking here about the transform, the third glorious outcome to be seen in this year of unfolding glory is transforming to his image. Let's turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. Our reader, are you ready? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. You read loud and clear. Stand up, Jim. All this is from God to right. Loud, 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 sweetheart. All this is from God to record us through, through Christ and gave us the name. Ministry. Second Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18. Who's got it? But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Thank you sir. But we all with unveiled face Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being changed, are being transformed, are being transfigured into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. In this season, at this time, and this year of unfolding glory, you and I cannot stay the same. You know, last year the Lord took us on a journey to higher ground, which is a continuous process. And unfolding glory is also a continuous process. 
Because it's saying, but we all with unveiled face. Some versions will say open face. And if we remember the story, that if we backtrack into history, when God started revealing himself and, and, and wanting to establish relationship with his people, the Bible tells us that Moses, when he went up the mountain to, to, to talk to God, he came back and his face was so shining. So shining that the people had to tell him, please veil your face. We can't see. We, we just can't stand. I'm paraphrasing. We can't stand the brightness of your countenance. And this is God's glory. This is a tangible manifestation of God's glory when it rubs off on an, on an individual. And here we're seeing, it's saying, but we all, so all of us, it's not just Moses, it's not just leaders, it's not just a few here and there. It's saying, but we all, with unveiled faces, we can see God. We say, with unveiled face, behold as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. No longer in this dispensation does our face need to be veiled to see God. With an open face, without any covering, this our God is accessible. And he wants us to draw near. He wants fellowship. That's why he wants us to be more like him because the world needs to see him. If we're not like him, how can we bring him to the world? And that's why we were going higher. We were going higher to understand him more. Because remember, we said we are a solution to our generation. Wherever you are, you're supposed to be a solution. You're not a spare part. Mm -hmm. And it's an error, therefore, for a child of God to say they don't know. If you haven't got the answer, you find out the answer. You say, I, I, I haven't got it now, but I'm going to get it for you. Because we're actively seeking to be a solution. Actively seeking to be a blessing. Because God has blessed us to be blessings. That is, remember, we talked about us in, 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 in the new crossover. We talked about us being partakers of the blessings of Abraham. We are children of covenant. And, and Abraham was blessed to be a blessing. Through, the scripture says that through him, the nations of the earth are blessed. Therefore, you and I are to bless the nations of the earth. Amen? Amen. And we bless the nations of the earth by being solutions. And so, he's saying, he's, he's saying here, but we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. And you know the glory here is the word, the Greek word doxa. Which means, as we said, glory, dignity, glory, honor, praise, worship. And we saw, we saw last year, last week, that this glory of God is tangible. We remember the case where the temple was being dedicated by King Solomon and the priests could not stand because of the weight of God's glory. And in this year of unfolding glory, we want to be carriers of the weight of this glory. We want to be transmitters because we have an assignment we said last week of dispelling darkness. And it's the light of God's glory that dispels darkness. We all, it says, we all, but we all with unveiled faith, beholding as in a mirror. What does it mean to behold? Beholding in a mirror is not just a casual look. It is actually a careful study a contemplation, an active engagement. So you and I are to actively engage. We are to, to, we are to carefully study. He says, we are carefully study as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. We are to actively engage 
in contemplating God's glory. And how do you do that? You do that through the word. All, all are to experience this transformation daily. It says, as we behold his glory, we are transformed. And transformed is the Greek word, metamorpho. And those of you in biology, what's, have you heard the word metamorphosis? Change. Can actually do you know metamorphosis? Do you know the story of the caterpillar? How it becomes a butterfly? So you do know metamorphosis. It's the process of metamorphosis that changes the caterpillar into the butterfly. It starts as a, what does it start as? What's it called? A pupa, I remember. And then out of the pupa, you then have the caterpillar. Isn't it? Those that did biology. And then on science. And then the caterpillar. Cocoon. The cocoon. Yeah, you, you missed it. Oh, sorry, sir. Remind me. To bet you remind us. To bet you remind us. The science students. <laughs> loud, loud, loud. Come and remind me. There's a pooper, isn't there? It's not the speck. And a... <laughs> uh, egg goes to egg to lava to the pupa or the cocoon. Pupa means cocoon. Okay. And so the adult. Yes. Adult, the fly. <laughs> so we were right. So he added the egg. <laughs> Where's the lot? <laughs> hey, so it's a bit later than earlier. No, it's the same. It's the, it's the, so you have the egg. Okay. Then you have the lava. 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 Is that the pupa is the cocoon. Yeah, the pupa is the cocoon. So you can oh, see okay. the cycle. The egg, the the lava, then the the where is the caterpillar? The adult. Yeah, the adult. No, 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 then the adult. Then the, after that, you then have the butterfly. The butterfly comes from the cocoon. Yes. <laughs> it's not, we're mixing this thing up. <laughs> oh, I need my science students. Because I can see this. The caterpillar, then the pooper. Say it. Please, can you say it loud for everyone to know? So... <laughs> oh my students a, cate a caterpillar <laughs> would eat and then go into hibernation yes. into a pupa would use the mucus to make the pupa mm -hmm. and then in that time it grows and grows till it then breaks out of the pupa into the butterfly adult. thank you an adult <laughs> and the metamorphosis basically is it changing from one form to, to the other form. thank you and so that is it science students sharpen up your knowledge yeah yes. we need to be a star in this region <laughs> so and so 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 and we went through this exercise so you understand the what this transformation is all about and so the transforming into God's image is not just an overnight thing. There's a process. And the process is as we behold, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. And the process of beholding is the process of carefully contemplating, carefully studying the word of God. And as we are studying the word of God, we are studying the living word we are studying jesus christ the living word is jesus christ jesus is the word made flesh because until you appreciate that this word is living you will not trust it to change circumstances you will not trust that the manifestations of the spirit can happen through you you will not trust that God is faithful to his word. You will not trust that if God said, let there be light, that there will be light. You will think, mm, uh, it might be a little bit twilight, but no. He's saying that, but we all with unveiled face, behold as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed. 
We're being transformed into what? We're being changed into what? We're being transfigured into what? We're being changed, transformed, transfigured into the same image. The same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the, the Spirit. We are being changed into him whom we behold. And it is a process. Just as we saw from the egg to the lava to the pooper. In the cocoon to the butterfly. It is a process. And so we don't embark on the process of transformation. We said it's through the transforming power of his word and discipleship. And this is a continuous process. You don't read the word once and then you sleep for two weeks. How will you change? How will the words change your spirit, soul, your soul and your body to align? To align with, it says, into the image of him who's called us. Because remember, when we're praying in, in the cross of night, we were saying that we need to live out Jesus. And how can you live out he who you do not know? How can you live out him who you are not like? Because the transformation is not just, we're not, it's not just our face. It's not just our face. You know, I was reading somewhere, somewhere and it was just saying it's not the face. But you know, I beg to differ that when we behold the image, when we behold, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord, we're being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Moses beheld the presence of God and his face shone, his countenance shone. The glory of God is visible on the life of a believer. They will look and they see there's something about the believer. They're shining. There is the radiation of glory. There's a radiation that, that rejuvenates. When the glory of God is upon a child of God, they're forever alive with the resurrection power. A believer that is looking withered, you wonder what's happening. Where are we? What are we looking at? What are we looking at? What are you beholding? Because you know, you just take your eyes off the word and watch some of these secular movies or just watching the news. It drains, it sucks the life out of one. Or looking at the phone at things you shouldn't be looking at. It drains, and you, you find that it, there's a level of emptiness that is perceived and felt. And so the Lord is saying here that we are transformed as we behold the image of God's glory. And we're, it says we're transformed into the same image from glory to glory. So it's a progression. And this from glory to glory is the unfolding glory. Mm. The, we saw with the butterfly. It's unfolding from glory to glory. You're going from one stage to the other to be more like Jesus. Jesus. Until we get to the stage where we are like him in his, in his full Full, full essence, as the Lord allows and enables. But whether there's a progression, it needs, it will happen as we continue to contemplate his word. Amen? Amen. As we continue to behold him. So I, I, so I want us to pray because it's not just our face that will change our counters, but it's our character. Our character changed because we, the more we see him, the more we see his ways. The Bible tells us he's excellent in all his ways. He never changes. He doesn't lie. He's never late. If he says it, he will do it. And so the character of Christ becomes our character the more we behold his glory. I want us to rise. I want you to begin to talk to the Lord. Begin to tell him where you want to see transformation. Where you want the glory of God to be made manifest in your life.
Children, rise, begin to tell the Lord where you want to see transformation. Because you need, if you don't know about your science, you want to ask the Lord to help you know things that you need to know. You want to be the best in your class. You want to be a solution where God has sent you. You want to be a solution in your world. You want to be a solution to your generation. You want to be the answer people are looking for. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I choose to be led by the Holy Spirit. I seek the gifts of the Holy Spirit to bring Jesus Christ to the world around me through salvation, through healing, through deliverance. Jesus, risen Lord, I purpose to behold you in your word, in your presence. Father God, let my character reflect that I've been with you. Let my character show the world that I've been with you. Just as the disciples were understood to have been with Jesus. Oh, Koshe Krahanda Rabasendi. Mata Yeba Kosondo. Lord, we yield to you. Lord, we yield to you. We yield to you. Let your spirit, Maka Sanda Rabasanda. Oh, I choose to be led of your spirit, Lord. Lord, I choose to be one, Robo Sanda, that the spirit wills to deposit the gift, his gifts in my life such that I bring healing to my world. I bring deliverance to my world. I bring salvation to my world. Lord, that we will behold you in your world and our character will reflect Jesus, Robo Sanda, in our conversation, in our actions, in our words. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Today is day 13 of our fast. And there was an instruction to bring our plans for 2023. Amen. Have you got your plans? Oh, Koshanda, let's lift it to Lord. We want to turn to Proverbs chapter 16. Roko Shika Handa. Proverbs chapter 16. Oh, Rabababa. Proverbs chapter 16. Mighty God. Shombo Koshanda. Roko Sanda. Proverbs chapter 16 says something. In verse, in, in, in verse 3, it says, commit your works. Have you got your plans? It says, commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. Co commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established. And then verse 1 goes on to say, the plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. And so the tongue will say something that the Lord will answer to. Begin to speak, to speak, begin to talk about those plans. Begin to talk to the Lord about them. Begin to tell him what they are. Begin to tell them the, so that the Lord can answer. So the Lord can answer your tongue. Begin to tell him what those plans are. Make it. Where are my plans? I want to tell you, Lord. Shika ta ta ta. Oh, this is not praying in tongues. Tell the Lord what your plans are. Tell him what your 2023 plans are, Father, in the name of Jesus. Read, tell the Lord about your plans. Tell him with your mouth your plans. Lord, we have spoken, hey, hey, we have spoken, 
our plans to you and thank you Lord that you answer. Father we thank you that you answer. We will continue to bring this before the Lord in the subsequent days. Today is day 13. We still have a number of a few more days of our class. I will continue to bring the plans before him subsequently. Hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus, it means that your face is veiled. As it was with the children of Israel at the time, their faces were veiled. Jesus wants you to approach him with open face. Comfortably, knowing that he's accessible and is available to you. The Spirit of the Lord has just laid on my heart that he wants to heal some with excessive bleeding, excessive menstrual bleeding. The Spirit of the Lord is healing you right now in the name of Jesus. We command that flow to cease. We reverse that affliction in the name of Jesus. The Lord also is, is healing a stuttering tongue, a stuttering tongue, a stammering tongue. Father, in the name of Jesus, we, we, we cancel that feeling of insecurity, that stronghold of insecurity, that, that lie that that one has been leaving that they are inadequate and therefore have been stammering. We cancel, we break, we destroy that lie in the name of Jesus and I say tongue be loose. Tongue be loose in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. If you don't know Jesus, I welcome you to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Say after me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and make you my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. I believe that the blood that was shed on the cross washed away my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me the power to live for you. I renounce Satan and all his works. Thank you for saving me. We pray that prayer. You're now born again. Welcome to the family of God. You're now a partaker of God's unfolding glory. You are a partaker of his glorious actions. <coughs> Praise God.